Hello and welcome to another episode of Spaghetti Western Podcast. This is episode 69, season 3, episode 4. Uh, today we'll continue our history of the Spaghetti Western, so we'll start with that and get into some of the other features. Uh, the film that uh, picked out this week is The Girl of the Golden West, uh, made in 1942. It's an Italian film production made by, made by Scalara Film out of Rome. Italian title is Una Signora dell'Ovest. It was directed by Carlo Koch. Uh, the story is based on David Belasco's story, The Girl of the Golden West. Screenplay is by Carlo Koch and Lottie Reiniger. Cinematography is by Ubaldo Arata. Of course, it's in black and white. And the music is by the master, Mario Nassimbene. Uh, the main actors and actresses are Isa Pola, who plays Ariana. Michelle Simone plays Samuel Butler, Rosanna Brazzi plays William Evans, and Valentina Cortesi plays Madge Curtis. Uh, the story goes that Ariana, played by Isapola, an actress in a variety show along with fellow actor Diego Caras, played by Renzo Marusi, start on a journey traveling to the West in search of new employment opportunities. The two join a wagon train organized and led by a wealthy rancher named William Evans, played by Rosanna Brazzi, of South Pacific fame. The wagon train leader takes Ariana and Diego to Butler, played by Michelle Simone, a large landowner who grants them the use of an old abandoned mine. Butler turns out to be a troubled individual who kills Diego, then tries to pin suspicion for the murder on Evans. Ariana falls for Butler's flattery, not suspecting that he was the murderer of Diego. Years later, she learns the tragic truth and in vain searches for Williams, or William, who in the meantime is married, leaving Ariana a life to live in solitude. Uh, we'll go over the main actors and actresses a little bit, give you some bio on them. Ariana, who's played by Isa Pola, whose real name is Maria Betty de Montesano, was born in 1909 and she died in 1984. She was an Italian theater and film actress who appeared in more than 30 films during her career. Uh, Michel Simone played Samuel Butler. His real name is Francois Simone. He was born in 1895 and died in 1975. He was a Swiss actor who started his career on the stage in 1920. Moving to Paris, he appeared in his first film in 1925. He went on to appear in over 125 films. Then we have Rosanna Brazzi, played William Evans. He was born in 1916, died in 1994. He was an Italian theater and film actor, appeared in over 150 films. And like I said, he's best known as appearing in South Pacific. Uh, then we have Valentina Cortesi, who played Madge Curtis. She's real name is Valentina Rossi Coenzo. She was born in 1923 and died recently in 2019. She was an Italian film actress who was married to American actor Richard Basehart. She appeared in over 100 films. So that wraps up the history of the Spaghetti Western or Italian European Western for this week. Moving along, we're going to cover whatever became of, and I picked out Lionel Standard this week. He's one of our favorites. Uh, Lionel Stander was born in the Bronx, New York, on January 11, 1908. He was a theater, film, TV actor. His, his crazy, he was a crazy, I'm sorry, craggy-faced character actor with a distinctive raspy voice who made his film debut in 1932 and went on to enliven numerous films. Stander was memorable as a cynical press agent in A Star is Born in 1937. Away from the cameras, Mr. Standard played something of a starring role in the political history of Hollywood, fiercely liberal. He made a memorable appearance in 1953 before the House Committee on Un-American Activities, which had been investigating communism in Hollywood for years. While many witnesses saved their careers by informing on others, Mr. Standard lectured the Committee on Democracy and Due Process of Law and refers, refused to repeat under oath his former frequent denials that he had ever been a communist. Stander had helped organize the Screen Actors Guild, raised money for the Spanish loyalists, and campaigned for the release of the Scottsboro Boys. Hollywood executives regarded him as a commie. 
One day in August 1939, his agent, Aim Last Vogel, told him, don't worry, Lionel, it'll blow over. Lionel said, I've always been lefter than the left, and I've worked very closely with the Communist Party during the 1930s, but I never joined. He was blacklisted in the early 1950s and supported himself as a stock player and Wall Street broker before resurfacing in international films, particularly Spaghetti Westerns in the 1960s. He later played Max, the eccentric chauffeur, on the TV series Heart to Heart from 1979 to 1984. Standard died in Los Angeles of lung cancer on November 30th, 1994. Lionel was married six times and had six children. I won't go into the, his wives and kids. I will go over his filmography quickly. He started in Beyond the Law in 1967 with Lee Van Cleef played the preacher. Everybody remembers him as Once Upon a Time in the West as the barman in 1968. He was also in Boot Hill in 69 playing Miami or Mimi or Mammy. Then he was in Stink. Sting of the West in 1972 played Stinky Manure. In 72 also played in Where's the Bullets Fly with Antonio Sabato as Lucky Capone. Hallelujah to Vera Cruz in 73 as Sam Tonaka Thompson. Then he pops up in Red Coat in 1974 as Dr. Higgins. And he was to appear in a 1981 Spaghetti, West, Spaghetti Western. That's the name of the uh, film itself, Spaghetti Western, but the film was never made. So that's Lionel Standard, 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 and that was uh, whatever became of. Uh, our, we've done a couple of whatever became of those guys, so I figured we'd do one on what became of those gals. So this week I picked out Elisa Montez. Uh, Elisa Montez was born Elisa Ruiz Panella on December 15, 1934 in Granada, Spain. She's still with us. Best known as Elisa Montez, she is a Spanish actress who took her pseudonym from the celebrated work of her grandfather, Manuel Pinella Elgato Montez. She is the sister of actresses Emma Pinella, born in 1930, died in 2007, and Torella Pavez, born in 39 and died in 2017. She is the daughter of Magdalena Pinella Silva and the law politician Ramon Ruiz Alonso and granddaughter and great-granddaughter of composers Manuel Pinella and Manuel Pinella Raga. Elisa was married to actor Antonio Azores from 1953 to 1969, and her daughter is the writer-singer Emma Azores, born in 1961. She dedicated herself to acting since she was a child, with her first acting appearance taking place on stage. In movies, her films can be divided into two periods, the first 10 years usually embodying young, angelic, or prudish wives, and the next 15 years taking part in wide number of co-productions. After the 70s, she was preferably dedicated her acting career to television and the stage. Her outlaw, her, uh, I'm sorry, spaghetti westerns include The Outlaw of Red River, 1965. She played Francisca Riano. Then she was in Texas Adios. In 1966, she played the mulatto gal. Then she was in Return of the Seven in 66 as Bren Brenda. In 66, she was in Seven Dollars to Kill as Sybil. 68, she was in Taste of Vengeance, played Julie Blake, and ended up in 1974 in Captain Apache as Rosita. So that's the gal, who are those gals? I'm sorry. Then we turn to the film of the week. And this one I picked out an early Spanish film called Brandy or Ride to Kill that was released in the United States. Most of us know it as Brandy. The Italian title was Cavalca EU City and the Spanish title Brandy. It was a 1963 Spanish Italian film. Uh, made by Phoenix Cooperative Cinem Cinematographica in Madrid and Produzioni Europa Associate, or PEA, in Rome. Directed by J.L. Barra, real name Jose Luis Barra Moradelli. The story was by Jose Malorqui, called El Sheriff de los Tatumba. 
Screenplay by Joe Baker, who is really Jose Luis Barra. Cinematography by Manuel Moreno, real name Manuel Rodriguez, and Henry Stewart, real name Mario Sabrina. And the music was by Oscar Rice, who in real life is Riz Ortolani. Uh, the main actors in this film are Alex Nichol, who plays Robert Brandy Parker, our friend Robert Hundar, Claudio Andari, who we've dedicated an entire episode to, plays Ray, Roy Moody, or Ray Moody. Mate Blasco plays Eva under the pseudonym Margaret Grayson. And Lawrence Palmer, real name Renzo Bugatti, plays Pastor Andrews. Other names you might recognize in the film are John Douglas, who plays Judge Stauffer, Anthony Gradwell plays Underhill, Antonio Casas plays Sheriff Clymer. George Rigo, or Jorge Rigo, plays Bo Pritchard. Albert Lockwood, pseudonym for Lewis and Dooney, plays Steve Donnelly. Jose Canaleas plays Chirlo. And Frank Brana is a driver of a coach. Story goes in the territory of Arizona, a gang of outlaws under the command of Bo Pritchard, played by Jorge Rigo, are terrorizing the settlers. Brandy, a drunken barfly by a clever ploy takes possession of a large sum of money that will allow him to help Eva, played by Margaret Grayson, a poor girl who ends up marrying the bandits led by Roy Moody, played by Robert Hundar, kills the sheriff, Antonio Casas, and no one wants to take the job. Eventually, it's Brandy, played by Alex Nichol, who is appointed sheriff, convinced that the drunk will not bother the bandits, but helped by Pastor Andrews, played by Lawrence Palmer, sobers up and starts to put an end to the outlaw's hold on the area. Bo Pritchard attempts an attack on the jail to free his henchmen, but Brandy, now aided by the citizens, defeats the bandits after a fierce battle. Uh, the plot appears several times over the years, so the film will be nothing new to Western film fans. Uh, it's filmed in Golden City, which is, was a set for a fistful of dollars. Alex Nichols' character is one filled with guilt from a previous experience experience who tries to forget the past through alcohol. He turns in a surprisingly good performance. Robert Hundar, the evil gunman dressed in all black, even his horse is black. Uh, Antonio is perfect. Antonio Casas is perfectly cast as the understanding sheriff. We know him from Big Gun Down as Stevens and as the, in the, the two Ringo movies. Uh, Mate Blasco is actually Robert Hundar's wife at the time and is the love interest of Brandy, but their story is undeveloped. They don't marry until the very end. Only Lewis and Dooney is miscast as a rough and tough henchman. He usually plays the sheriff roles. Uh, some biography on these actors. Alex Nichol was born in 1916 and died in 2001. He was a theater and leading man actor in, Ho in Hollywood B-films. He was an understand, understudy to Henry Fonda in Mr. Roberts, which featured Lee Van Cleef in his first acting role. Robert Hundar played real name Claudio Andari. We had an entire episode of devoted to his career, so if you want to learn more, look up that episode. Antonio Casas was born in 1911 and died in 1982. He was an ex-soccer player termed film actor, remembered for his role as Farmer Stevens in The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly and Major Clyde in A Pistol for Ringo. Uh, Mate Blasco was born in 1938. She's still with us. She's a Spanish theater, film, and TV actress. This is her only spaghetti western, and she appears under the alias Margaret Grayson. And like I said, she was married to Robert Hundar from 1965 to 69, and they had three children. Uh, Louis and Dooney was born in 1920, died in 1979. He was an Italian-born, Spanish actor specializing in spaghetti westerns. He fought on the side of the Axis during World War II and fled to Spain after, war, after the war was over in 48. He became a friend of director Ignacio Aquino, who gave him his start in films. This film was actually the winner of the Antonio Barbero Revelation Award in 1965 Cin Cinema Writers Certic Award, Circle Awards for Best Director to Jose Luis Barra. Now we want to turn to the CD of the week. And this week I picked out 
Chrysanthemum, Perron Bronco di Caragne, which is chrysanthemum for a bunch of wine. I'll go over that again. Uh, CD of the week is Chrysanthemum Peron Bronco di Caragne, which is chrysanthemums for a bunch of swine, also known as a wreath for the bandits. It was directed by Sergio Pastori and stars Edmund Purdom. It's on the beat label, number BCM 9510, has 26 tracks and a total of 41 minutes and a 16-page booklet. Uh, the chrysanthemums, we don't know if it was ever released, but the CD was released in it for it. Okay, uh, then we want to go to Book of the Week. This week's Book of the Week is The Good, the Bad, of the Dolce Vita by Mickey Knox. And it's a fantastic book. Not too many pictures in it, but there are a few. And the best thing about it was he really goes in depth over his time in Italy. So if you really want to know how Italy was during that golden age, pick up this book. It's a great read because he starred in Hollywood films before he went to Italy and then became a, uh, a, a writer and was uh, helped Sergio Leone in, in his films. The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, and some of the other ones, even though he's not a, he's not credited, he'll mention what he did in those films. So uh, pick it up. It's probably still available on Amazon. If not, uh, look around some of the other bookstores, and you could probably buy it online. So that'll be it for our Book of the Week. Next, we'll turn to Autograph of the Week. Hey, this week I picked out one of my favorites, Gilbert Rowland. Uh, like Eli Wallach, he stole every picture and every scene he was ever in. I got this one. He was back in the 90s, I think, towards the end of his life. And he actually sent me some pictures from uh, some of the other spaghetti westerns that he was in because I mentioned I enjoyed him starring in those roles. All right, that'll do it for that. We'll turn now to the weekly news. Okay, this week we've got a couple of DVD Blu-ray releases and a couple of uh, RIPs. The two new Italian Blu-ray releases are from Eagle Pictures. One is Sierra Una Volta Il West, Once Upon a Time in the West. Directed by Sergio Leone and starring Charles Bronson, Henry Fonda, Claudia Cardinale, and Jason Robards. This release is on uh, Blu-ray and runs 185 minutes. It's all the information I could find on it both at the Spaghetti Western database and in Amazon. The second DVD is Per Qualci, Delaro, and P.U., which is, as we know, for a few dollars more, directed by Leone and starring Clint Eastwood, Lee Van Cleef, and Gian Maria, Maria Volante. It runs 132 minutes, and that's all the information that they give on this one. Uh, on our Boot Hill section, a big one died this week, uh, Hardy Krueger. Kruger was considered one of the post-war Germany's best actors. He died at, died at the age of 93. Uh, press release was he died suddenly and unexpectedly on January 19th in Palm Springs, California, where he lived with his third wife, American-born writer Anita Park. Kruger starred in the 1957 British movie, The One That Got Away, about a captured German fighter pilot who stages a series of daring attempts to escape the Allies and, as the title suggests, finally succeeds. His charm, good looks, and the fact that he deserted from the Nazi army towards the end of World War II helped Kruger land further roles at a time when Germans of his generation were still eyed with suspicion ab abroad. Kruger appeared in a string of English-language adventure and war movies, including A Bridge Too Far in 1977, The Wild Geese in 78. Hardy made one European Western in 1975's Montana Trap, also known as Potato Fritz, which he starred as Captain Henry Eberhardt uh, at Potato Fritz Jansen. Our friend Dan Husen was in that movie, and he said he got along quite well with uh, Hardy. Uh, the other 
person that died this week is Italian actor Camillo Milli. He died in Genoa, Italy after a hospital stay for COVID-19. He was 92. Uh, Milli was born as Camilli Migliori in Milan on August 1st, 1929. He debuted on the big screen with Girls of Today in 1955. He went on to appear in numerous roles in Italian films. Uh, Milli appeared in only one Euro Western, Hallelujah to Vera Cruz in 1973, which also uh, co-starred our friend Lionel Standard, which we covered today. Uh, now I've got some uh, posters to go over, so we'll go to the vault. I'm going to stand up for this one. Most of these are uh, Belgium posters, but a couple of them are pretty big. This is the Belgium poster for Brandy or Ride to Kill, starring Alex Nickel. We've also got Lisa Montez poster for Yul Brenner, Return of the Seven. And this is a, uh, a French poster. And they've also put another title down at the bottom, which I believe I wrote on, down on the back that it was Swedish. Okay, then we have a poster for Lionel Standard. I'm sorry, Lisa Montez was in this one. She actually gets billing on this one with Johnny Garko. And that one is A Taste of Vengeance. We have a couple of Texas Audio that Lisa was in. This is the Belgium poster. And then a huge one here. Let's see if I can do this. I'm going to have to do it in sections probably. you down at the bottom it says directed by they tried to americanize it frank baldy instead of francisco baldy they said frank baldy so give me a second on this one and i better fold it up so it doesn't get ripped to shreds and then we'll finish this off with one of our favorites again i love this one this is a final standard called te diem we call it tedium because it's one of the worst. And our friend Jack Palance is in this who we've covered. And then I've got a couple of uh, surprises for you. I thought about this and dug these up. When Dan was here, he made me copies or sent me copies of a couple of what they call call sheets. And a call sheet looks like this. And it lists all the actors here that are going to be in the scene for the next the following day and was usually slipped under the uh, actor's door when they got back to the hotel. But on it, it's got who their character was, what time they're going to be on the stage to film. It's got all the props going to be used in it, such as this one's for Catlow, gun and knife. Catlow's gun and star, guitar, harmonica, beef jerky, grass for the wound, all kinds of information on these. If we could ever find all of these call sheets, we'd know, fill in a lot more of the blanks for the westerns that we know little about. I've also got one for Captain Apache. And from this one, I was able to find out who played the uh, President Grant at the end of the movie. He shows up and he's not... Um, credited, but I was able to find out from the call sheets who he was and contacted his son on Facebook, who gave me some more information about him. Uh, I got two for Captain Apache and one for Catlow here, plus a couple of other ones that uh, I've got in the files. So that'll do it for this week. Um, we don't know what's going to happen for a couple of weeks now, because as most of you know, I'm going into the hospital on Monday for bypass surgery. So I'm going to be out at least a week or two, and Jay's still on hiatus finishing up his film. So keep track of my progress on Facebook, and uh, Jay will be on Facebook also, so he will let you know when we're going to be on the air again. And I want to thank all of you for your thoughts and prayers for me, and uh, I'll see you when I see you. So adios, amigos. <laughs>